Welcome to RC Cincy. Today I wanted to get into drones, uh, basic information about them, uh, how to uh, fly basically, set up, uh, controls, tips, tricks, you name it. We'll try to cover it in today's video. So this applies to all drones. Yes, I have a particular make and a design, but it is pretty universal to drones. So let's get into very basics, is setting up and turning on your drone. So there's a few different manufacturers, but a lot of them have the same premises. So this can be applied to other drones. So first things first, you have a controller that's gonna control your drone. You have the drone itself. You wanna make sure you put fresh batteries in. Try to use alkaline. It does make a difference in the controller. And then if the drone most likely will be powered by a rechargeable battery, make sure it is charged. If it's not, it'll either be flashing lights or beeping, indicating that your battery is low. It's gonna wanna land. Don't keep trying to take off or force it to take off. Because all you're gonna do is kill the battery and the longevity of the battery. Now this having wheels is just unique. It has multiple uh, functions, but that doesn't matter. The characteristics flying and everything that we're gonna apply is gonna apply to all drones. So this is a sharper image drone. It's the Air Racer, the one I featured on the channel a while back. I don't know if I ever did a flight video, so there you go, this is the flight video. I'll buy and unbox and do overviews because I like it, and I'll forget to do test flights and other videos because I just cycle through products. So I apologize, I should've did that. So step number one is gonna be to always, always, now this is vice versa for nitros and vehicles and stuff, always turn on a transmitter. In this case, you're gonna to wanna to turn on your drone first. And what's so important is to place the drone straight from you facing that way. This is gonna give you orientation. The drone is facing forward. This is gonna help if you have any like um, orientation mode or AKA headless mode, that's gonna help with those functions. You're gonna see that the signal is searching a slow flash or fast flash uh, it's searching for a signal. Then you're gonna wanna turn on your transmitter. Make sure that your drone is flat on level surface facing away from you. Now there is indoor door drones and there is outdoor drones. Wind is a huge factor, keep that in mind. Uh, and where you fly it. So then you're gonna wanna go, this is what's called a non-altitude hold. So you're gonna have the throttle all the way down. You're gonna go up, down, you're gonna hear a beep. It's no longer slow flashing, meaning it's bound. You can barely tap the throttle. You can see that it is fully bound. So when it's fully bound like that, you have complete control. Now, altitude hold will have the throttle stick always in the middle. So you'll typically have a motor unlock, which will be like two sticks in or a auto takeoff button. And then it'll hold the position of the altitude. That's why it's altitude hold. Now this one is my favorite kind. This is uh, this is uh, non-altitude hold or throttle management. So this is gonna allow you to control the throttle and that's what controls the elevation. Throttle's elevation, left to right right here is what's called yaw. So yaw would be turning left or turning raw or, or right. That is yaw. And throttle is elevation. Then on the right side of your control stick, you're gonna have right roll, left roll, and then pitch forward, pitch back. So it's gonna be, say it's flying, right roll, you're going to the right, then you come back, left roll is gonna be to your left, pitch forward, and then pitch back. So those are your basic four controls you're gonna have on every single drone. Now, there also is 
Speed control settings, every drone's different. Some drones only have one speed, some have two speeds, sometimes some have three speeds. You'll click on the speed button, whatever it is in the manual, you can see that. And it'll just basically be a one beep, speed one, two beep, three beep, and then it usually cycles back to one. So that's how you change the speeds. Sometimes you need the extra speed for a very light wind. Of course, again, you shouldn't fly in wind. Sometimes you need it for a little more get up or a little more speed. And sometimes, uh, you know, fly faster. Or sometimes you don't have that option depending on the drone. Then you also have stunt buttons. Those are your 360 flips. Sometimes you just have the stunt button where it does a flip. Sometimes you hit the stunt button in a direction. So you can do a front flip, back flip, right flip, or left flip. So that's really cool. You have your auto land and auto takeoff on altitude hold. This is not altitude hold. Uh, this one has the cool function of land. Uh, when you hit the land button, it just uh, allows you to drive on the ground. Right now it is in drone mode. It does have two trim functions land button which means land and then the align button i think it's to uh figure something out with the trends on the buttons we're not going to deal with any of that because we're going to do basic flying with this drone it is fully charged it has been sitting in my shed but it is fully charged it should have uh the light went out uh just make sure when you charge some chargers will have a red light and a green light flashing some will have just a red light wherever it is it'll change so if the light was on Sometimes the light turns off. Sometimes the light turns green. Sometimes the light turns on. Just pay attention to when you plug it in with it being off, which one it is, it's gonna be vice versa. It's gonna take anywhere from 60 to minutes to the fastest charge I've seen is about 40 up to three hours. It is very possible. So it depends on how far you deplete it or anything like that. That is completely different from drone to drone. So basic flying. I'm gonna step this back just a little bit. Yes, this is indoor flying. Uh, this has some of our adorable stuff right there. Pay no mind to that. Uh, but what we're gonna do is show you, it's all about throttle management. So I'm gonna boost up the drone. That is throttle management right there. Holding an altitude, see that? This is a very nicely trimmed drone, so it flies well. Some will drift to the right or left. So let me land. If you drift to the left, so once you land, and you're on level ground, a lot of drones will have what's called a calibration button. Let's see, these ones are both to the right, left, I think. Or to the right. I can't remember what the calibration is for this one. I think they're both to kind of like a weird right. I can't remember, but usually it's both sticks in a 45 degree angle this way, or both sticks and a 45 degree angle that way. This one being a little different with the drive modes and stuff, there may be a different button which you can always refer back to the manual, but it's easily, it's usually 45 degree angles inward, to the left or right. The lights will double flash and then you're aligned. And make sure when you do reset it, that is a flat level ground. Uh, some concrete could be, you know, shift from time. Tiles typically pretty flat. Tables can be flat. It just depends on the surface. Just make sure it's a flat level area because it will affect. So calibration is also good for when you have a really gnarly wreck or it's acting funny or it's without the wind moving too far to left or right. That's where you also have the trim buttons. Let's say it's going too far like this to the right, trim it so it goes back this way so it kind of balances out. Same with forward and backward. So you can trim a drone uh, but I would always calibrate first and then go from there. So this one is a little bit loud being these two little blade props. Inductress can be uh, quieter. There are louder drones depending on the props, the size motors, the performance of the drone. This is probably like a 3.7 volt, um, you know, like four, 500, 600 milliamp uh, battery with four blades, you know, very basic six axis gyro, you know, stuff like that. All those do. Um, you know, obviously the more advanced high-end drones will not have that. They'll have the acro mode, which will allow flips, rolls, you know, all the stuff that you see on FPV style drones. So that's pretty much the gist of it. Now, when you're flying, I know it's really loud, I apologize. When you yaw, you turn the, you turn, see? That's yaw. Now it changes, or when you do that, it will change your orientation. It will change. So if I turn this way and then hit forward, it's gonna go this way. So remember, y'all is turning to the left or right. 
Then of course you have the throttle, and then of course you have pitch forward, pitch back, and then right roll and left roll. So practice hovering, uh, being indoors or outdoors, depending on the size of the drone, and if it's safe or if it has little things to kind of block it, this kind of does, so it does make a big difference. But be careful, you can scratch TVs, you can hit people in the face. I mean, you gotta, you gotta use some common sense and some uh, safety stuff. So your flight time is never crazy. On typical little drones like this, we're talking five, six, seven minutes. If you're lucky, 10 to 11, nicer high-end drones like DJI that you spend hundreds of dollars for, they get 30 to maybe 40, I think, I think it's now a new Mini Pro 3 advertises 41, but that's hovering with no wind. That never happens. By the time you do your waypoints, everything, you're looking at maybe 20, no, maybe 35, 34 minutes, 36 minutes, something like between 34 to 36 minutes. With my Mini 2 boasted flight times of 31 minutes, I was 31 to 32 minutes, I was getting, uh... After setup and everything, about 26 to 20, 24 to 26 minutes safely. And it also depends on distance, wind resistance, if you're in sport mode, if you're recording. It, it just depends, you know, on what you're using and what you have on and what settings you have on. So it can vary from drone to drone. This one being lighter than another one. The other one having more plastic on it. The other one having a bigger battery. There's just so many variables, so I can't give you an exact estimate. But they're typically... Uh, I've seen them as low as four minutes, and I've seen them as high as 12 minutes for cheap toy grade. So, but I'd say average is six to seven minutes. Uh, you can time that, and that's that's the time to estimate it just sitting here hovering with no wind, by the way. So once you start giving it full throttle, from zipping around, it typically uh, reduces. Wind will reduce flight time, and wind will create uh, resistance on these little brush motors, and it'll wear out faster. So these are little brushed motors. Um, they're not brushes. I forget what they're called. They're like, I, f I forget the name of it. Coreless motors. These are little coreless motors or something like that. So they're not brushed. They're coreless or brushed, but like coreless, whatever. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, you know, they can technically be replaced. So if like one of your motors burn out, uh, as long as it's not the board, if it's anything on the board, you're done. It's manufacturer makes that board, that particular model connected to that particular transmitter you're done to you at that point. Unless it's like a B-Whoop or e sheen something that you can just get a board for, solder it on. Uh, wiring can get damaged, I've seen that happen, but typically these little motors burn out. You'll have it land upside down, you'll be giving it throttle, and it'll have resistance on it, it just burns the motor out, or something will wrap around it, or a lot of flight time will also cause that as well. So motors do burn out, and you literally just have to solder the new motor on, or somewhere in the wire, cut it, reconnect it with some heat shrink, solder the wire together, of course, then do a little heat shrink on it to keep them from touching, and then putting the motor back in. These are screws, so you could replace motors on this. You can re replace the motors on 99%. The only thing is you have to replace the same size motor. So for instance, this looks like a, I don't know, maybe an eight or a nine mil diameter, and then, I don't know, they're typically like eight, nine mil, or seven mil, or six mil, and then it'll be like the, top, the length. So it'll be with the length is how they identify those motors. They're all typically the same. There are performance ones that are just a little bit bigger for the size of the drone, like they're oversized, more or less. Um, they do make small brushless motors, but they're not going to be on any toy grade models. Uh, you can't upgrade batteries. That's one of my biggest things. Is you'll see me take the ones I hate. Propri I don't hate them. I dislike proprietary drones that have batteries built in, meaning you cannot just pop in another battery and fly again. You have to wait till this charges. That's why on some of them that have like a battery hatch or something, I would literally cut it out and uh, unsolder the battery and I'll put a connector on it, I'll solder a connector on there and then literally have like a rubber band or something or Velcro or something holding the batteries on and I could literally change out the batteries. I've done it to, I don't know how many drones on my channel, so I love to do that because it allows me to just, because typically they will be anywhere from two to 600 milliamps. So I can use like 400, 500. They usually can all be used in the same variation. So long as the 3.7 volts in the same style connector, obviously you can choose a connector you solder on there, of course. It's usually that little white two prong connector. I forget what it's called. Um, I think it's MST 2.0, I don't know, NTS 2.0 or something, two point something. 
I can't remember, but it's a small little white connector. It's used on so many Esheen and B Whoops and all the little small little drones. It's used on a lot of drones. There's one outside that I have that uses that battery. And the cool part is you'll get some drones that will have those batteries. Like for instance, the Black Panther drone, what I loved about it is it had a battery that you would plug in and charge and you can buy batteries for it and you can have multiple batteries and fly for hours. So that's the advantage. This one, you'd have to wait for the, the drone to get charged. So that's why I like that Panther drone so much. It was 20 bucks, it, flo it flew good. Uh, I don't think I ever did the fight BBR on that one either. Jeez, so Pete's. So I'll try to do it on other more popular drones like that that just did well on the channel or you guys have one of them. Uh, so it's just a matter of first starting out with it being away from you, you know, hovering, maybe starting to go forward, backward, right, left. And then you want to start with a circle. So you would turn, fly around, turn, fly around, a little bit of yaw and a little bit of roll. And you would just basically do a circle. Then you start to do kind of like the grace and you start to go up, turn around, come back this way, turn around, come back that way and so forth and so on. Just different direction. Just remember orientation. Typically drones will have lights. I like the ones that have like green lights in the front and red lights in the back. From a, it helps with orientation or real distinctive characteristics. This from far away may trick you. It does have this little thing right here. It does have orange on it, but it's the black this way when it's coming at you. So it's kind of hard to see. But this is a line of sight drone. This is nothing you should fly far away or any of these little drones like this. Even uh, technically by law, even DJI drones are supposed to have line of sight, by the way. Uh, 400 feet is the range. I think this is going to get to 400 feet unless you lose control of it and it just keeps climbing. Or you get it to keep just climbing. You can fly to an illegal limit. Uh, this being under 250 grams, FAA rules do not apply besides uh, airports, military bases, those kinds of things. Other than that, it being toy grade really allows you to fly a lot of places. There's still restrictions, of course, uh, especially airports and military bases and such. Um, yeah, this thing does drive really reasonably decent. Uh, it isn't like the like the JJRC like drone slash car ones. There's a little bit a little bit more hobby grade, still entry level toy grade hobby grade, but um, this one isn't bad. What I like about uh, what I like about sharper images, their, uh, their ability to, let me move on in, their ability to, uh, sell mass products that are reasonably decent quality, develop kind of their own unique design. You can see all their controllers are pretty much the same. I hate to say that, but they do work. They're solid. I've dropped these before. Uh, and they have unique designs and unique products that do certain things. And I kind of like that. Uh, like I had the robots, I've had other drones, I've had camera drones, I've had boats, I've had Sharper Image makes drift cars. Um, most of, I've gotten a lot of views off of Sharper Image products. So keep that in mind. So, and they're designed in California, produced in China, but they're unique designs and they work well. Like that one can hover very, very accurately. There's even an arrow which weighs forward. I kind of like that with the spoiler. So once again, just basically learn throttle management. You're not going to be full throttle the whole time. You're going to be, you know, holding it right here. It holds altitude. Give it a little more, a little bit higher altitude. Just learn that and then learn to slowly kind of go forward and then turn this way or even forward and tilt. But forward and turning would be best with some yaw. Don't be afraid of yaw and don't be afraid to roll or pitch or whatever you need. Uh, range on these are typically decent. Or, uh, line of sight so you're not meant to go far away so you'll be decent be careful with wind you're up there you know it might not seem like high wind but the minute you start getting a little bit higher a gust of wind will grab it and just make sure you put in the highest speed and try to get it uh to come and if you're still losing it if it's still getting away from you no matter how much you fight just go ahead and power it down it's gonna come down now obviously it might be over in someone else's property or somewhere else if anyway you're flying but instead of just keep trying to fight it and just going further and further and higher away just go ahead and power it down don't completely cut it down but power it down to where even if it's blowing it's still coming down as it's blowing away from you right like it's coming down blowing away from me so power down and let it land don't kill it completely because then it'll just drop out of the sky um and i like these because you can do some cool tricks with them like 
if you become good at flying with these, what I like about alt uh, throttle control ones is they tend to be peppier than altitude hold. We'll have a certain pitch forward, a speed. These ones that are controlled can typically have more pitch and more speed forward. They can be faster. There are good altitude hold drones, don't get me wrong, but most of the good ones are throttle management. That will allow you to fly more drones, better drones, faster drones, um, and uh, allow you to fight wind a little bit better. Uh, it's not that hard. If you live this position, it's gonna stay at this height. Like It's not that hard. To control it, it takes a little bit of coordination a little bit of time i didn't learn to fly instantly i bought one of those little inductrix and i learned to fly i figured out what was forward what was back uh and i just took my time and figured it out i'm not the best pilot can i fly these absolutely i fly big airplanes and jets and stuff so these are not that bad can i fly uh acro mode and do flips and rolls with fpv no could i get it off the ground and maybe move around a little bit probably but it's harder than it looks to fly acro. Uh, I had one that had acro mode. It was a one with goggles. I tried that scene. Uh, I even had the one that didn't have acro that had the 3G, 6G and a button and you could switch to acro mode. I would like fly under the table and around the house. I did the whole FPV scene. I had reviewed a few goggles on the channel. So I've really experienced quite a bit when it comes to drones, a higher end camera drones, you know, five, five plus, 600 plus drones dollar drones so i've had a wide range on the channel so i've experienced plenty of drones and i tell you what uh this doesn't meet my favorite criteria like i said uh i hate to say once again to bring it up more recent one is a panther one something where the battery door open hatch opens and there's a battery that you can buy a bunch of them like you can buy a five pack or four pack from amazon with a multi charger because it has multi ports so you can charge all batteries at once for like 25 dollars they used to be much cheaper, like 17, 16. Good old inflation got us again. So those are my kind of favorites. Of course, non-altitude hold, fully controllable ones. They make really nice little uh, B-Whoop, little Inductrix ones. They make a little medium grade. I'd say like the, the, the one of my favorites that I could think of that was rock solid. It was kind of proprietary battery, but they gave you two. Two is like the magic number, and you can still buy more batteries from it. I think it was called the... Not the Thunderbolt, the Bolt B or Bolt B or something like that. It was from Holy Stone. It was yellow and black. It advertised 45 kilometers an hour. It was a zippy little drone. It was fast. It was agile. It was a perfect, nice size. It could fight wind because it didn't have much wind resistance. Some of those flatter bodies had a lot of wind resistance. Um, really agile. Uh, you know, you might like, they have like a $70, $80 setup where it's a small little drone with a camera on it and a set of goggles and a controller. If you're in the zipping under furniture and around the house, that's cool as well. They do have the uh, non-acro mode ones, so they're very easy to fly, just like these kinds of drones. So you have tons of options when it comes to that. I've done FPV for vehicles, for trucks, you know, for different things. I did FPV with my tank and was shooting targets. So I've really got a chance to experience quite a few stuff on the channel. And I want to also share my uh, experiences and my knowledge with you guys. So if the videos are long and they're in-depth, is because I want to give you as much information as possible. If you sift through that, I know some of it, you know, I, I ramble a little bit. But I promise you, I'll get you some information. So these have these little foam ADD. These have these little nice little foam tires. They're really grippy. This thing was fun. One of my fate, like it flies really well. Um, but I've had a few different ones on the channel, drones. And this year wasn't the best year for drones. I think the second year I had my channel was the best year or the first year, one of those two, was like the height of drones when they had like the Fury B and like all the little Inductrix and all the other little drones. It was like a drone craze there for a while. It died down a little bit. Uh, of course, they got more expensive, you know, with the fancy camera drones and all that. But they need to get, people, people, folks need to realize they need a nice, clean, basic little drone. And they have a few on Amazon. Let me know if you guys want to see, like, a newer model or newer version of an Inductrix with, like, the batteries and stuff. And, like, a nice little setup. Um, let me know if you guys want to see that on the channel. I do have some crawling videos coming up. I did order some parts for the... Um, might as well take this time. Order some parts for the uh, Axial uh, SCX24. Uh, I want to do some modifications and upgrades to the, um, I called it last time the Amaral, but it's Amaral. 
uh, Amarel or something like that. I don't know the name. Sorry if I butchered the name. The 114 scale buggy on the channel. The newer the newer videos. Um, I'll do a proper bashing. That one was like a first run trying to figure the vehicle out. It had really uh, touchy steering. It has really narrow tires and a lot of power on asphalt. It's just not going to get grip. I should have known better. I apologize about that. But it needs dirt terrain. Skate park would be cool with it, seeing how well it can hold up. But I think it's time to get out the Sean White kicker ramp, ramp it, do some proper bashing at a field or a dirt field or, you know, dirt or whatever. Uh, I'll figure something out like that. We'll get the rock crawler course together. There's parts coming for that. I'm super excited because I feel like I had one major weakness and we're going to fix that in the next video. So I'm super excited about that. Any other tips and tricks, comment in the video below. Like I will do my best. It's just all about connecting it, charging it, binding it, make sure it's bound together and just taking the time to hover and slowly learn different things. The flip button, I don't care about none of that stuff. It's cool that you can do a flip, but it's just you pressing a button. Like acro mode would be cool to do a flip, like to be flying and just woo woo, and then keep going. Like I'm jealous because I can't fly with FPV like that. But uh, yeah, I just didn't get into acro mode enough to really fly as much. I can fly that drone. I could take off and fly around. I just can't do the fancy tricks. Um, so there's that. So that's pretty much all the tips that I could think of I could give you guys. Um, just not, you know, draining the batteries, not flying when they're flashing, go ahead and landing. Like at a point, this will actually, um, so this one, these are the lights for this one. It's actually really nice, like slow lighting. Uh, they, they use fancy lights, it's crazy. They, they do, do do it a little bit different. But this one will flash when the battery is low and it will probably auto land because it does have well, land button is meant for it to be land, like driving on the ground, you know. It's supposed to be a little racing, zipping little one. It's pretty fast. I'm a little disappointed I didn't have a... Maybe it does have a low and high. The only thing I was really disappointed about is it didn't have a low and high. So that was my main disappointment is I wanted... It says spin trim. Uh, I, I'm disappointed I didn't have a low and a high mode. It, it's, when you get a throttle, it does have power. Like, it'll take off just fine. And it will hover just fine. There we go. Look. And that's a very small area that I'm flying in. So being, uh, throttle management like that, I forgot. I'm gonna tell you guys a really cool trick. Is when you're flying this... Once you get good at flying and you have a little bit of height and the drone has a little power before the battery gets low, what I like to call is the, I heard the word, I don't call, I call it tumble wumble now, but I heard that word before, uh, I guess a popular, popular YouTuber would say that whenever he would wreck his vehicle or what I call it, jackknife. I don't know, I called it a funny word a while back, if I can think of it, is basically you're flying and what will happen is, uh, you do need a flip button for this, unfortunately. And he said, all it needs to have is a flip button and throttle management, not altitude hold. So what will happen is you'll hit the flip button. As it's flipping, you're going to kill the throttle and it's going to do a gazillion rolls. And then right before you get close to the ground, you give it full throttle and it'll catch itself and hover and not hit the ground if you do it right. It's really cool because it does a bunch of flips. You can get it to do in every direction. So as you're starting to flip forward and you kill the throttle, it'll keep just flipping as it's coming down. And then you'll give it full throttle and then it'll catch itself before it hits the ground. It does have to have a nice charge, decent power. And I thought that was a really cool trick. I've done it a few times. I accidentally found that out with my, uh, what drone was it? Uh, it was with, I want to say the Bugs one. It was like a is the MJ, uh, MJX, uh, is that right, MJX, um, the X600, the six uh, motor drone, black, really cool drone, I love that drone, I thought about buying that drone again, I loved it so much, uh, I have actually burned out motors on it, from being really rough on it, flying in the wind and stuff, you will burn motors on these, wind is the biggest enemy for brush, for cordless or brush motors, whatever you want to call them, is its biggest enemy. So keep that in mind. That's why I really like the Bugs drone. That thing had a lot of power and it used brushless motors. 
with a 3S pack, you were able to do like 70 miles an hour or something crazy. And those are only still like $69, $70. So that's insane to me. So if you ever want to move on up to something more powerful, more agile, faster, cool, more professional entry level hobby, is look at the bugs, the NJX Bugs 3. It doesn't matter if it's made by Decon, if it's orange, if it's blue or black, or even the white version. I don't care about the GoPro you can mount on it. I've removed those feet and the GoPro, throw in a 6S and that thing rips. There's a little bit of oscillation or vibration uh, with the standard props. You can't put tri props on it and it makes a big difference. But honestly, with even with the standard props on a nice little 3S, that thing rips. Even 2S it rips. I think 2S it'll do like 38, almost 40, or right at 40 just about, or maybe even 42. And then, um, you know, on 3S, they can do up to 70 set up properly with enough, you know, pitch and angle. Uh, so it's insane. So, yeah, I was just kind of reminiscing about all the different products. So if you guys need any other tips, tricks on any of the products, go ahead and comment in this one. I'll try my best to help you guys and give you as much information as I can. Sometimes uh, I do text speech and it may sound funny, but it messes up sometimes with text speech. I apologize ahead of time about that. Uh, most of the replies I do on the phone, of course. So there you have it, guys. That's all the basics you're going to need to know, and it's just a matter of doing it. Don't be afraid. A lot of these drones are very lightweight, so if you're outside, fly above grass and don't go too high. And if you happen to wreck, it'll hit the grass. They're so light that it should not damage it. Most of them will come with props. Keep that in mind. Make sure you put the same orientation prop. So you see how uh, this one it should have, a lot of them will say like A3, and then caddy corner A2, and then it'll be B2, and then B2. I don't know why it says A3 on this one, but this one says A2. This one says B2, and this one says B2. So B2, B2, A2, A2. I don't know why it says A3 on that one. So A's are going to be right here, and B's. They're always caddy corner and diagonally from each other. So these will be the same props, and these will be the same props. You can see this one is angled this way, and that one is angled this way. If you get these wrong, your drone will not fly. That's how you know you'll have it wrong. It will like do something weird like this or try to flip over on its back. It will not fly right at all. So keep that in mind. Uh, sometimes, uh, it, this one says like left motor, axle motor, axle motor, left motor. These are labeled. And I do like that 2021 Trapper image, and there's a little number, so... Uh, like I said, not a bad little drone. Type-C charger. That's one of the first Type-C chargers I saw. By the way, I did have an issue with uh, with uh, Sharper Image where they gave me a bad wire. And it burned out my uh, gravity drone that goes on the wall. It was a white wire. Uh, and it burned out the gravity drone. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, I guess it was bad or there was something wrong with the drone or something messed up. I don't know, but uh, I did end up, they ended up refunding me, so that was not an issue. But just be aware of that you can get defective stuff. You can get bad batteries that don't last as long. It is possible, uncommon. Just don't drain, drain them all the way. Just take care of them a little bit and just take your time with it. And trust me, you'll have so much fun. Drones are pretty awesome. So I think that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video. Any questions or comment when it comes to drone flying, please let me know, I'll do my best to help you. I am not the best pilot, but I will give you all the knowledge I do have uh, for free. So thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.